Hi, welcome back to Cheyenne, Wyoming Urban Gardener. This is Debbie and it has began. We are starting to get zucchini and yellow straight neck squash in. But unfortunately, we had a disaster with the yellow straight neck squash plant that this yellow straight neck squash came off of. Anyway, this is about the size that I enjoy getting zucchini off of the plant. As you can see, it's a lot larger than most people like, but to be very honest, the um, skin on this zucchini is a very thin. If I just barely even poked at it, it would just go right on through. And the seeds are not mature in a zucchini like this. Um, for zucchini seeds to be mature, the zucchini would actually start turning yellowish orange. And then you would have probably some mature zucchini seeds. However, I usually, if I'm going to collect seeds off of a zucchini, will wait until the entire thing is orange before I attempt to save any seeds out of it, even, even with some rotted spots on it, um, because that's the best way to get the most mature zucchini seeds as possible. So if you let the zucchini just keep growing, this one is only about seven days from when it started on the plant is when I harvested it. So if you let this zucchini keep going for another two weeks, possibly three weeks or even until the end of the season, this zucchini would probably be about three feet long um, and it would be absolutely enormous. Um, and then it would turn, turn yellow more towards the bottom where it's been laying and then it would eventually start spotting orange and then turn completely orange. So zucchini are a squash. They're like pumpkins and eventually they would turn orange on the vine um, and the shell on the outside, the skin on the outside would harden completely. They would be just as tough as a pumpkin, but they do not do that until they get a lot older. The yellow straight neck squash, it is a lot smaller, um, but when you can start seeing like the bumps and ridges like this in a in a um, regular yellow straight neck squash is the time when you want to harvest this. Um, I would prefer that it be a little bit larger. Um, sometimes I can get them larger and still be able to harvest them with having a thin skin, but the skin on this one is extremely thin. Anyway, let's show you what happened to the plant before I even harvested this squash. And here is the plant. What happened was this morning I was watering and we've actually had water every day for the last three days of rain. Um, yesterday and the day before, it actually rained quite heavy. Um, so the ground has been kind of saturated, um, but it does dry out pretty fast in the west like this. We're in Cheyenne, Wyoming, zone 5A slash 5B. It can go either way. And when it gets a lot of rain like that, and it's been dry for a couple of weeks before that. We've had a little bit of rain here and there, but not anything significant until the last few days. So when you have a lot of rain like that, sometimes the squash plants can get completely saturated. And so this morning I was watering because it's dried out quite a bit. And I just wanted to water just a little bit to tide it over um, until probably tomorrow mornings when I'll heavily water. So it just snapped it just broke off didn't even touch it just a little bit of water and it just broke right off and i thought that it had not broken that it had just fallen over so i i sat it back up it sat up just fine but then when i came back out you can see the leaves were all droopy and they were very very droopy so i went and checked it and indeed it had snapped off completely so we did lose a squash plant, unfortunately, but we do have seven more in there and I'll show you those in just a moment. So here we go, you can see the space. The actual vine right here is a red curry vine coming through. So the space right there is where the squash was. And we actually have a smaller squash um, plant right in there. Um, you can't see it very well because of a leaf. But we do have a smaller yellow straight neck squash plant right there and that one will take over for where this one was and it will pick up and start growing because it's getting more light now and um, it should fill out and start producing probably in about three weeks or so so towards the end of august we'll start seeing some yellow straight neck squash out of that so technically we still have eight plants in here we still have seven that are up to size and are producing we actually have 
some squash back in there and we've got a squash hanging on this one and several more that are coming on so we have seven big plants in here and we got the one smaller one right there and we have actually one small one up here too so if we lose another squash plant then one of those two will come on or both of them depending on if we lose another one so they will produce continue producing but anyway let's talk a little bit more about the garden today is july 29th 28th or 29th sorry i haven't looked at the calendar yet this morning so um we're getting towards the end getting into almost august and we're basically in the peak of the season right now for us i know i know a lot of people are already through their peak and have already pulled out a lot of their plants and are doing their fall planting but there's just some things that we can't do a second run of such as squash because it just takes um, so much of our season we basically have about 120 days um, of season depending on frost dates um, so we have a short season here in Cheyenne Wyoming um, so we do not have the ability to, to do a second run of squash sometimes I will still transplant if we've got like a small squash like that one I'll transplant it into another area and then it'll come continue to grow um, but sometimes it takes a about a week for them to come out of the shock of being transplanted so sometimes it's just not conducive to transplanting them this late in the season so anyway, it looks like our cabbage butterflies are back. There's one. Um, so anyway, it's just not a good thing to try and transplant at this point. And I've actually stopped doing the tomato suckers, getting those rooted for people. Um, yesterday was the very last one that I planted. I'll show you those in just a moment. They're going to be wilty for a couple of days. They always are until they establish themselves in their new soil, new pots, and take off and grow. So anyway... Um, we still have plenty of squash. We'll still have plenty of squash all the way through the season because these will continue to produce um, because they're just now basically up to the point of production. I really hated losing that one this morning, but sometimes, as they say, it crap happens. So anyway, we have our red curry in here as I just was letting everybody know that it is um, just kind of gone wild at this point. We've got it growing all along the front. You can practically watch it grow. I come out here in the morning and we'll have a vine way back here. And then I come back out in the evening and it's way out here. Like this one was way back here yesterday, last night. And then I come out here this morning and it's all the way over there. So you can practically watch them grow at this point. They grow several inches in a day on the vines as well as production of um, any fruit or anything like that on them or vegetable on them. So we have all of that going on. Our peppers are just producing like crazy at this point. Um, even our smaller ones have kind of caught up with the bigger ones at this point. I haven't staked them, but I do need to stake them. Um, they're kind of getting overran with the red curry squash, so I'm not real sure they're going to do a whole lot, considering that they are being just overtaken. Um, we even have some of the red curry back there trying to climb the house so the vines are just massive over here in this section and we did pull a zucchini that you saw the zucchini off of our plant earlier that one is still doing just fine we've got a couple of more zucchini coming on on that same plant and all of the other ones are blooming now and getting ready to produce as well and we are starting to see some curling of the leaves in the center section for cauliflower and for the broccoli so we're going to have heads on those probably pretty soon um, I say soon but once they start making heads it actually takes uh, a bit of time for them to get ready and I was just checking back in my records yesterday of last season to see how far along we were in the season and last season I actually had beans all the way up to the top of the trellis and was already getting beans on the, the pole beans and on the squash I already had squash that was just basically pretty much done as far as zucchini and yellow straight neck squash because it had been producing like crazy by that point already and I already had broccoli heads that were twice the size of my palms um, on all of my broccoli so we are behind this season as I was speaking about earlier in a couple of videos we are very behind we're probably I wouldn't venture to guess two and a half three weeks maybe even more on some of the things that we have out here in the garden 
but hopefully we will have the season hold off as long as possible so we can finish up a lot of these things. I mean, I'm, I'm like a lot of people across the country that are worried about how cold the temperatures were of the soil, especially in zones like ours and fives and fours and sixes. Um, we're just all a little bit later in the season than we should be because of late frosts, things like that, and um, droughts and whatnot. We haven't had really a, a drought, in my opinion, here in Cheyenne like we have had in other areas of Wyoming or in other states. Um, to me, we've had pretty consistent and pretty um, regular rain so far. Um, I remember last season I was having to water constantly and we didn't have rain from the end of May all the way through to August. So we did not have rain there at all for quite a long time. Maybe a, a small shower or something like that, but not anything of significance. So I had to water the entire season. This season hasn't been quite as bad. So right now you're looking at our pumpkins. Um, I have actually a mixture of several different uh, varieties of things in there. I have some um, butternut squash and I have pumpkins in there and I have um, zucchini in there I think and I have the Boston marrow and I have the white pumpkins and yeah they're probably all going to cross we won't save any seeds off of these this season um, just because of that possibility uh, I basically had to plant a whole lot of things over here to try to get them out of the main garden and we still ended up with squash in the main garden just so we could have more food production this year than anything and I still have a lot of seeds so we'll have a lot of seeds for next season too of all of these varieties so I don't have to worry about that um, and all of my seeds I most for the most part I have saved from years previous so I'm not dealing with the seed issue that a lot of people are having from getting seeds uh, from 2021 and 2022 um, there to me it has just been a lot of bad seeds out there and I'm not sure what the reason is I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories or all of that, but it does seem like that this gardening season has been one of the worst that I've ever had to deal with. We've got good production going on, but it has taken a lot of extra work this season from what it normally does. Um, and as you know, our dinosaur kale has just struggled this season, whereas I had beautiful kale last season and it doesn't make any sense of why it's like that but it is like that that's a centronella candle if you're wondering why I keep moving this guy I got it a couple of years ago and we haven't actually used it um, probably should but it's just been out here and it kind of is a kind of a pretty thing in the garden so I just kind of keep it in here so anyway our kale has struggled this year we've had struggling with different plants it took a long time to get the squash up and started even the pumpkins because of the soil temperatures being so low. Um, and it's just, you know, it's been difficult this season versus other seasons. Um, so we planted as much as we could and my partner actually got out here and helped me with quite a bit of it. He was actually out here a couple days ago with me plant, um, planting and pulling peas. So he's gotten, he's been helping quite a bit more than he, normally does because he doesn't know a whole lot about the gardening that's more my department but uh, this year he has gotten out and helped because we're looking at the shortages in the stores and it's happening the shortages are happening um, I sent my daughter a couple of days ago to go to Walmart to pick up just normal things like bread um, we don't bake bread all the time but we do bake bread um, just not as often as we probably should and now we will be doing so more often we made potato bread yesterday I'll show you that in just a moment um, but sent her to the store just to pick up a couple things a gallon of milk this and that and I only sent her with a short list there was maybe 20 items that were on the list and she came back with about 10 because the rest of them were not there um, they were just were super 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 expensive if they were there or not there and she said the majority of it was just not there the shelves were bare and she said the bread aisle was almost empty almost completely empty and she said the lunch meat aisle was completely just decimated there was nothing hardly there um, meat aisles were completely empty 
and she said she went to a couple of different stores and it was the same situation for both of those so we're seeing what's going on and I know that everybody keeps talking about it in the homesteading um, groups and stuff like that and yeah we're dealing with some shortages and we're going to continue dealing with them and it's going to be worse and things like ramen noodles and quick meals um, are definitely flying off the shelves faster than almost all the other things because a lot of people can't grow gardens they don't have the space they live in apartments whatever and they're having to stock up on what they can which is quick meals fortunately we have quite a stock of MREs um, I don't really talk about it a whole lot on the channel but we do have quite a stock of MREs we have uh, roughly about seven or eight boxes I think of MREs so we have quite a few of those and we don't really eat an entire MRE when we open them because they have a lot of calories um, and we've only opened them a couple of times when we're on we're camping trips or something like that so we do have MREs and I would suggest to anyone out there that is worried about the current situation to get your hands on some ready meals like that um, emergency meals so MREs is a good way to do it and that's what we have but they are now super expensive from what they were when we purchased them some years ago and they do keep a long long time so we always check ours we keep them in a cool dry place and basically in the dark so that way we don't have issues with them um, going bad over several years time so we do have MREs we also have a lot of canned things that I canned last uh, growing season that are still left um, we have a lot of the pantry is still stocked and there's still some things that I have to get in case we don't have tomatoes I've been worrying about tomatoes we have a lot of tomato plants we had 36 at the beginning of the season I think we're now down to maybe 30 because we've had a few get blight and this that and the other that we've had to take out um, but we hopefully will have some tomatoes if a hailstorm doesn't happen or um, if they just don't produce for some reason which I'm, I've been getting worried about we have some tomatoes on the vines but it's not like it was last season where we just had gobs and gobs of tomatoes so yeah I get worried about it um, we are gonna have potatoes thankfully we're gonna have corn most likely um, we have loads of peas thankfully um, and hopefully we'll have some cabbage here very soon these are a lot of the staple items that people use and are very shelf stable when you have them but they don't last forever so you kind of worry about what you're going to be able to get in stores if it comes down to the necessary of you having to purchase in store and you know things like lettuces like this beautiful lettuce here it doesn't store you can't keep it so it's not really a staple item potatoes and corn and peas and things like that are your staple items um, there's a lot of things that you can freeze like peppers and stuff like that but um, I wouldn't consider it a staple item in my opinion so anyway um, we'll have hopefully a lot of squash um, pumpkins and things like that if everything goes well and at least some and we'll store those that is a staple item in my opinion because you can make a lot of things from pumpkin it's not just for decoration and we will have some carrots it won't be a super amount but we will have some and we'll have some daikon long radishes which will store pretty well and uh, just things like that so if you're concerned about what's currently going on in society and um, inflation the prices all of that and shortages definitely think about the things that you could store some of the staple items um, even if you don't have a garden find a place that you can get them as reasonable as possible and put them away I mean a lot of people are talking about this and so far it has not been incorrect um, things are pretty much as we used to say going south so <laughs> anyway um, I did have to go ahead and put up some pans to keep the birds out of my garden and it's so far working um, I just basically come out here and move them around a bit and uh, the wind blows them quite often and they're shiny so they keep it they're keeping the birds out with so far it's working very well 
Um, my lettuce is starting to come back. It's back there. They didn't touch this lettuce for some reason, so that's good. But it just seemed to be the lettuce and the cabbages they were picking at, and they've left the cabbages alone too. I've got some new plants in there um, for fall. Hopefully they will come on and make something. I don't know because it's such a short season here. And when we start getting frost and freezes and stuff like that, it pretty much is a consistent basis once it starts happening. And then when snow hits, snow starts being consistent. So we get really cold temperatures pretty quickly here. Um, and then it stays cold until the end of May or first or second week of June. So we have long winters, short season in the summers, and sometimes it can be too cool for certain things like watermelons, cucumbers, and stuff like that. Um, thankfully, I figured out the situation with growing cucumbers and melons and watermelons and stuff like that in containers and uh, putting them on concrete, which really heats them up a lot quicker and uh, keeps a more consistent temperature for them. And they've been growing very, very well. But anything can happen. They still take quite a long time to get ready, even if when they start putting fruit on the vines. So hopefully we'll have some of those things. But again, they are not shelf steady so they will not keep for a super amount of time and I wouldn't consider them a staple um, so our staples are what you see the potatoes and stuff like that so anyway that is what is going on with the garden let's walk around a little bit and I'll show you what else is happening I keep hoping for these delicata squash to really start doing something they're starting to get runners right in the middle um, we haven't figured out whether they're going to be running um, vining plants or if they're going to just be bush variety they could be either one they're kind of looking either way at this point all of them kind of look the same until they start actually having vining uh, plants so right now so far they look like they're going to be bush variety but we're not sure yet but there are four plants there they should have a lot of squash on them when they start producing and then once they get started and then we do have some blooms on them in the center sections then they should really start coming on. So hopefully we'll have some of that. We've got um, beans that are starting to run up on the uh, fence now, finally. There won't be very many through here, but everything makes a difference, especially when you're trying to um, basically store food. So we've got that going on. Our rhubarb is putting back out again. Even though it's late in the season for rhubarb, we can still do things with that if we needed to. Um, I moved my borage over here up against the fence because it kept toppling over. I did pull the old borage out of the pot because it was finished. The second one is blooming right now, but it is starting to seed pot as well. In fact, there's been a couple of them come up from seeds. And um, those will come on when this one is finished. So we've got that. Um, our roses, we have a bunch of rose hips on these knockout roses, but I still need to do some research on whether or not you can actually reuse the rose hips like you do other roses because knockout roses to me are a little bit different. Um, they don't really have a scent, but they were pretty when they opened. So I had got these at a clearance amount and then just went ahead and threw them in pots. And they were very, very, very distressed when I got them. And now they are back to blooming like crazy and starting to bush out so um, I'm not real sure how to prune those either so I'm gonna have to, to look into that as well our acorn squash is starting to take off we've got one here and then a couple back there I need to thin out one of them but um, they are coming on so I think they're actually going to produce maybe one or two squash um, before we get too cold for them maybe even more if possible and I had thrown a Tahitian squash over here that was struggling in the main garden just because and it's starting to produce runners now so maybe we'll get something off of it I'm not sure um, but it does get a little bit more sun right there in that particular spot I had found a baby rose bush that had came up over in the section near the artichoke so I pulled that out and went ahead and put it in a pot and I think I'll give that away because I don't want any more rose rose bushes in here um, there's just, to me, they take up too much section of the garden that I can use for other things like my asparagus. And I do, do need to get in here and weed this too. Um, the nasturtium had done pretty well in the beginning that's back here. And now it's kind of a lot smaller than my other nasturtium. So I'm not real sure that it's going to produce anything. But this is the empress nasturtium. So it's red, 
versus the orange or the yellow and the other variety that I have is the orange and yellow so I don't know maybe that's a little bit of a difference there we had a leaf miner that got into one of the leaves but it doesn't seem to be touching anything else so it has it either died in that leaf or something happened but um, nothing else has bothered those so that is a good thing our artichokes are not going to do anything this year they're trying but so late in the season now um, it just will not be possible so so sad for that but I guess they were just a little too shaded over here and again that's why I would like to actually remove the rose bushes here um, and put them somewhere else because they seem to thrive in shade and um, they could be in a little bit more of a shaded area and get them out of this section and then I could actually plant artichokes over here where it's a lot more sunny. Our onions have surprised me in the last few days so that's a bit of a surprise and for you as well because they are getting big. We've got some heads in there that are pretty nice size. They just keep uh, getting a lot bigger day by day. Um, and even some of the smaller ones are now starting to head up. I've continued to come in here with the onion hoe and pull soil away from them so that way that they continue to get bigger. But um, they are starting to get some nice heads in there. So hopefully we'll have some good onions this season. We still have a quite a long time that they can grow. Um, they are kind of frost hardy so they can actually handle a frost. So they can continue to grow through that as long as they don't get a huge amount of snow. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with those. Tomatoes are looking fantastic even though they haven't really started producing a whole lot yet. Um, I think the heat that happened where we had almost 100 degree temperatures really took a num they took a, a hit on that. So, so um, they had kind of, they were blooming still all through the heat but I noticed that nothing really set. And I think it was just the heat and the blooms kind of dropped off. But they are starting to pick back up and bloom again now that we're down to, today it's 81, yesterday it was 70. Um, and the day before that it was like 81 or 82. We'll be back up to 90 tomorrow and in the next few days. But it's only gonna hit 90, not like 93, 97 or anything like that. So I think they'll continue to bloom and set fruit. We've got a couple of super sauce tomatoes in there that have set um, that I've noticed. I'll show you one of them right now. Right there is one. And we've got some San Marzano's even though the plants were really, really um, blight ridden. And uh, we've got a couple of more super sauce way back in there. Yeah, actually on the most damaged plant, surprisingly enough. And all of these are Old German and Giant Ox Hearts. So they have not really started fruiting yet. Again, they're a longer season, but I think that they will be doing that pretty soon. We still have blooms on the Super Sauce Tomato underneath it. So I think that they will start setting fruit very soon as well. They look a lot more healthy than they did last year. If you noticed last year or followed me last year, you noticed that I had a lot of... Uh, browning on leaves and stuff like that. I have not had as much of that this season, but I did have um, some blight on some tomatoes. In fact, I've still got blight on this one here and this one here, but I'm kind of leaving them because they are blooming to see if they actually produce anything at all. Um, so that way we can get something off of them. But we do have San Marzano's hanging in gobs on this one, and it's a little bit bigger plant than the one over there that has a bunch of San Marzano tomatoes. And then we have a shorter one right here that has started producing some fruit as well. And then we have an old German there that has a tomato on it. Um, and actually another smaller one I just noticed. So that one is starting to produce quite a bit. And our tomatillos are just going nuts. They have little husks. Well, not really little. Some of them are palm sized all over down in here you can just see the husks so we'll have loads of tomatoes or our tomatillos on those and then um our tomatoes that are a little bit more shaded back here are blooming so i think that the temperatures hold off on them a little bit and they're blooming and starting to produce themselves so hopefully we'll have some tomatoes i, I keep worrying about it but we should have tomatoes just as long as we don't get killed out with hailstorm or something 
And our sunflower over here, the volunteer that no one planted, is blooming. It bloomed today. So there is that little sunny face. It's not very tall, about five feet tall, but it is blooming. So I suspect it probably came out of the bird seed. It might be a um, black oil sunflower, I think is what they typically use for those. And we've got plenty of blooms on the two tomatillos over here. But I haven't seen any husks yet, but they look like that they might be on the verge. So hopefully we'll see something out of them. And I think I actually see an eggplant and I did not see it yesterday. So let's look down in here. We do, we have an eggplant down in there. Oh, and it's pretty large too already. So yay, we got eggplants. We have plenty of blooms on those. The plants are getting pretty big. So hopefully we'll get some nice eggplants. I'm not a super fan of eggplants, but at least we've got something on those plants. I basically got the plants almost for free. So I just went ahead and threw them in here. Um, and I think that they are the largest variety, a black beauty or something eggplant. So they should be quite huge. They're gonna be large and purple. They're not black, but <laughs> they'll be very dark purple. So we're getting lots of those. We still have sunflowers through here that are getting ready to bloom. These are shorter varieties, so they're not huge varieties. The one in the center I thought was a mammoth sunflower, but I think it's actually an incredible. So it will not get very tall anyway. Um, maximum height for it, I think, is about five feet. Um, so it may get to that point because once they start forming the bloom, they still grow another two or three feet before they actually get to blooming. Um, so anyway, tomatillos over here are looking really good. Uh, they're a little bit smaller than the others, so I look for them to start producing pretty soon, though. And I think that they actually came up as volunteers from this, the tomatillos that I had last season. One of them must have escaped and went to seed. So um, they're looking beautiful, though, so I hope that they produce something. All the potatoes are still looking good, and I think we're going to have to go into a part two. I hate to keep doing these long videos, but... Um, at least we're up to 30 minutes on this phone versus the prior phone that I had. So we'll see you in a part two. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for notices on new videos as they come out. And part two coming up.